Hi guys! Hello! Thank you for joining! And today we decided to invite you to take a stroll around one of the neighborhoods in Toronto. Many people, when they're moving to Toronto, struggle deciding and choosing which neighborhood to choose from because ultimately there are just so many hoods to consider and there's so many criteria to keep in mind. That's why we decided to make a series of videos about each neighborhood in Toronto so you can have a clearer image of what to choose when you come here. And today we're going to take a stroll and show you around the Corktown and the Distillery District areas. These are some of the most unique and affordable neighborhoods around downtown Toronto. What we're going to do in this video is show you around how these neighborhoods look and feel. Uh, we're also going to rank those neighborhoods according to a selected set of criteria. And we're also going to share some of the fun historical facts with you. But before we proceed, let me tell you a little bit about uh, how we're going to rank those neighborhoods. So we made a list of uh, seven categories and we will be judging each category ranking from one to five, where one is poor, bad and five means great. All right, so let's not wait any longer and go for a walk. It's a wonderful day and I can't wait to get out of here. And it's actually wet because somebody has cut this grass recently. So let's get moving. Yes. Let's start with taking a look at the map. Here's the boundaries of the two neighborhoods. They're in the east end of downtown Toronto. What we love the most about Corktown and Distillery District is that this area is historic and one of the oldest in the entire city. As to me, it gives off a bit of a homeland European vibe, don't you think, Anna? Yeah, totally! If you are someone who loves spaces full of history and non-modern architecture, this neighborhood would be a great choice. Here is a bit of history. Corktown was originally settled by working-class immigrants in the early 19th century. Many of these families came from the county of Cork in Ireland. This is where the name Corktown originated from. That's why it has this early 19th century European vibe here and there. Back then, most Corktown residents found employment at one of the local breweries or brickyards, with the distillery district being the most popular one. There is a lot to be said about the famous historical wonder that is Toronto Distillery District. In 19th century, it was home to the largest whiskey distillery in the British Empire. The distillery district is also the first brewery of its kind ever constructed in eastern North America. Today, it's a premier destination for art, dining, culture, entertainment and shopping. There's something for everyone, and when it's not a lockdown, the streets are bustling with events and gatherings. This makes the distillery historic district a favorite escape among locals and a must-see destination for tourists. Other neighborhood landmarks include these two real historic sites. So this one is the historic Little Trinity Church. This is the oldest surviving church in the city of Toronto. It dates back to 1844. And right next to it, there is the Enoch Turner Schoolhouse. It's the oldest standing school built in the city just four years after the Little Trinity Church in 1848. The school was established by a wealthy brewer and philanthropist whose mission was to educate the children in the poor neighborhoods surrounding his brewery. If you're into outdoors and park hangouts, Corktown Common and Underpass Park are newer parts in the area that are so gorgeous and unique that they won awards for their design. Underpass Park also hosts a popular farmer's market every Thursday with the local Toronto producers. Now that you know a little history, let's discuss each criteria in more detail. Corktown and Distillery District are popular with young professionals who value this downtown location for its affordability and proximity to Toronto's business and entertainment districts. Many of Corktown's older commercial buildings have been converted into live work studios, condominium lofts and professional offices. Some now are even used for movie production. All this has given this neighborhood an added charm and coziness, if you're into that kind of stuff. If you like Brooklyn and New York, then you definitely appreciate Corktown. Corktown contains some of the oldest Victorian row houses in Toronto, dating back to 1850s and 1860s. These former workers' cottages can be found on the narrow lineways that are strictly tucked away off Corktown's main streets. Honestly, strolling along these laneways is my favorite afternoon thing to do. 
with sunlight cutting through the buildings and a temporary gateway from the loud main streets filled with concrete and high-rises. There's plenty of new condo buildings around here. The West Donlands development, for instance, is in the southeast corner of Corktown, and it's planned to feature 6,000 new residential units, commercial space, schools and child care centers, all surrounded by nearly 23 acres of parks and public spaces. Average rent price for one bedroom apartment would be around $1,900 per month and around $2,900 for two bedrooms. Mind me, these prices are as of June 2021. Ever since the pandemic started, the prices for rent have dropped by about 20%, and I think they're very likely to go back up once everyone is back to the offices and schools. Overall, for housing, based on prices and availability, I would give this neighborhood 2.5. This is just because it's a fairly pricey area to live in, and there's not a lot of good supply in the area. Frankly, that's the score I would give to many Toronto neighborhoods. Housing in Toronto is just not the best. Anyways, there are a lot of new construction happening in the area, so maybe my score would go up in a couple of years. Safety is a tricky parameter to judge. Like all Toronto neighborhoods, there is some crime in Corktown, and it's all relative. For this criteria, we will use dry statistics from areavibes.com. This is crime rate per 100,000 people. If you compare an Ontario average versus Corktown, you'll see that it's pretty safe. Based on this, I would rank safety of Corktown and Distillery District at 5 points. We personally find this area fairly safe. But please keep in mind there is a notorious moss park inhabited by lots of homeless people nearby. I suggest you avoid that area during nighttime, unless you like some adventure and interesting encounters. Ok, let's talk about green space. There aren't that many green parks in this area, apart from Corktown Common and David Crombie Park towards St. Lawrence Market. But there is a beautiful lakeshore just a few minutes away by foot. We love coming here in the mornings during weekends, just to chill, read a book with a cup of coffee and enjoy the view and some fresh air. If you go 10 minutes north, there is also Regent Park. It has been gentrified over the last few years, and it's now filled with new condos and, most importantly, great sports grounds and lots of green space. This is where I go running, and we play some soccer and basketball. And because it's a little away from bustling downtown, it's a lot quieter here too, especially if you turn to many cozy green streets adjacent to main streets. Overall, I would give Corktown and Distillery District neighborhoods 3.5 points for green space, because there is some great green patches here and there, and it's nice, but two parks is far not enough for these neighborhoods, in my opinion. Next is transit or transportation. Corktown and Distillery District are just 15 minutes away from core downtown by streetcar on King or Queen Street, or 30 minutes by foot. There are also buses running up north to Bloor Street, where you can get to train stations there. There is no train station in this neighborhood, but there is a new subway station being planned just south of King and Parliament. However, it will take several years before it starts operating. If you drive, there is an easy and quick access to highways, Don Valley Parkway and Gardner Expressway. Walk and bike score is pretty high in these neighborhoods too, so all transportation combined, we would give this area 4.5 points. Now it's time to talk shopping and entertainment. I've already mentioned that Distillery District is full of shops and art galleries. There are also a handful of design and furniture shops in the area. You can also find all the everyday necessities here. Staples, Dollarama, grocery shopping, pharmacies, pet stores. They're all within walking distance. In my opinion, the main beauty of Corktown is proximity to St. Lawrence Market, where you can find any fresh produce that you'd like, which includes some ethnic cuisines too. If you're looking for a big shopping mall, Eaton Center is just 10 minutes away on a streetcar. And one of the most appealing things about Corktown for me is the culture and entertainment. This area is full of theaters. Alumni Theater, Nightwood Theater, Canadian Opera Company, Canadian Stage, and so on. Distillery District alone is a great hub for entertainment with various art installations, performances, and bars. 
close proximity to core downtown gives you a pretty easy access to Scotiabank, Arena, Sky Dome and cinemas. Not that we get to benefit from any of that during the pandemic lockdown, but things are looking up, and if vaccination rates keep going up, we are looking forward to everything getting reopened very soon. Overall, my rating to shopping and entertainment in Corktown and Distillery District is 5 points. Another important criteria for us to talk about is health. There are plenty of clinics in the area. A dental clinic, a couple of eye care clinics, physiotherapy clinic, and let's not forget about our furry friends. There's a couple of vet clinics too. If you need more choice, and if you go west, St. Lawrence Market area offers a bigger variety of clinics. The closest hospital is a St. Michael's Hospital. It is a short ride away by streetcar in one of the neighboring areas. Overall, I would give health category 3.5 points, just because I personally think that the better rated clinics are located a little bit further out of Corktown and Distillery District. The next criteria for us is the demographics, and more specifically, how it impacts community and diversity in the area. And I would personally say it could be better. There are many young professionals in the area, with the median age being 35 years old. According to Area Vibes, only about 20% of residents are families with kids and about 47% are married couples. I'd give this area 3 points for diversity overall. Just because we would have liked to see more racial and age diversity around here. Most folks here are young families or couples and they are predominantly white. Last but not least, schools. If you have a kid, Corktown is not the best option. In fact, there is only one high school in Corktown. I guess the low percentage of families with kids explains why. You can find more schools a little further, an elementary school in Regent Park, a junior and senior public school in St. Lawrence area. It might be a good location for college students, though. There are two George Brown College buildings nearby, one on the waterfront and one on King Street. The closest university is Ryerson, and it's about 15-minute public transit ride, or a 30-minute walk. If you have a toddler and need nurseries or childcare centers, you'd have to venture out into Regent Park or St. Lawrence area, just because there is none in our area. So for education, I would give Corktown and Distillery District only 2.5 points. If you're moving to Corktown with a family and kids, you would have to commute a little further to find a place for your kid. Let's sum it all up! Overall, Corktown and Distillery District got 29.5 points out of 40. It's a pretty good score if you ask me. Of course, everything depends on your priorities. Some people need area more suitable for families with kids, some want to study and need nothing else but just a university they attend nearby, some just enjoy bustling, fast-paced vibe of downtown, and some just prefer peace and quiet of residential areas. Corktown and Distillery District will likely appeal to you if you're looking for an area that's affordable and convenient, that's close to downtown and has a character that none other neighborhood in Toronto can offer. And this is Corktown and Distillery District for you. Isn't that super pretty? We really like it. Yep, yep, that's actually that's the area where we live right now. Yeah, and that's why we decided to start with that. But if there is any areas that you would like to learn a little bit more about, please let us know in the comments below and we're going to make sure that we make the videos and cover the neighborhoods that you're looking to learn more about. And please don't forget to click the like button below and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Let's keep exploring together and see you in the next one. Bye friends. Take care.